Having set that up, let's go back to the main page of the sequencer, so click on exit, bottom left, and then press E on the Atari keyboard. There we are, back to the main page. Now we've created an empty track here, we need to delete that, so simply click on backspace on the Atari keyboard and press OK. There we go, that's now gone away. The last thing we've got to do is to set up a MIDI click. Now, when the computer is in record mode, it generates a MIDI pulse. This can be sent to a drum machine, like our SR16, and you can tell it to play on the beat, like a metronome, a particular drum sound, which is very helpful, obviously, for playing in time. As well as that, there's also a beep on the monitor as well. I found this very annoying, and I prefer to turn the volume down on the Atari monitor. So let's set up our MIDI click. So we go up to Menu MIDI, move the arrow to the top there, and click on MIDI through with the left button. And here is the MIDI through page. Okay, first things first, the MIDI click. We have to decide which channel our drum machine on. Well, our drum machine is on. The SR16 is actually on A16, so I change that to A16. The note I want it to play, the next thing down, is find it down a bit more. There we go, G sharp 2. And lastly, which is a tom sound, and lastly we've got the velocity here, that's basically how loud it's going to be. Um, I normally turn this up to around about 100. If you find and you, when you're in record mode that the click is too loud, just simply come in here and turn the velocity down a bit. One other thing to do in this page, and that's in auto off channel, click in the space there with the right button to make that go blank. Lastly, down to exit at the bottom. All we have to do now is save all those settings as the auto load song on our program disk and then we're ready to go into the program. So, saving songs. We'll deal with loading and saving later on, but for now, follow the instructions, move the mouse up to Menu File, and click on Save Song. And this exciting little file selector box comes up. The name of the song will probably already be in the selection line up there. If it's not, simply click on Auto Load Song, like that, and it will jump into the line. I'll just demonstrate that again. Imagine that top line is clear. If we click on Auto Load Song, it jumps into the top line there. If you've been doing loading the printer adaptions, you'll probably be in the printer folder. It'll probably say something like A-Printer-Son. If that's the case, click on this little symbol here to bring you back to this page here. You might have to click twice, once to get you out of the Epson folder, secondly to, click to get you out of the printer folder, back to this level here. Having got to this level, simply click on OK, and that song will be saved to disk. The problem is, as we can see, that our disk is full. The program disk comes stacked with information, so we actually need to delete the old autoload song before we do this. So click on Cancel. Go to Menu File. Click on Delete File. Click on Autoload Song, which is going to delete the old autoload song. Click on OK. Delete file, are you sure? Yes, please. Click on OK with the left button. Press Cancel to get out of the page. There we go, like so. Press on OK. All very tedious, I know. And now we can go to Save Song again. Auto Load Song, there it is in the selection line. Click on OK. It's now going to save everything in the computer as Auto Load Song onto the disk, which is this area here. And there we go, it's done it fine. Now, no problem. Great. Let's get on with some sequencing.